Hey guys, Brian Castro here from Better Chest Training. And recently I have been trying to improve my uh, diet, my uh, nutrition. Um, I've been trying to exercise a little more and therefore I've been trying to eat a little bit better. And I came across um, this app about uh, nutrition, about daily dozen, the types of most nutritious foods you should have in your uh, diet. And I got the idea, and actually the, the author of the app made a very good point, is that uh, we only have so much that we can take in uh, with regard to our food, and uh, we have to make and recognize and make choices that serve us. And, and, um, and I thought that was really uh, important in terms of how he put it instead of saying you know do this don't do this he said well you know you have a choice between you know a uh, piece of fruit and a donut for breakfast and and uh, it is the accumulation of choices that will determine your future with regard to your health so I thought I would apply some of those uh, that kind of mindset to our chest diet so what activities are we doing in terms of our training and are they serving us so uh, instead of looking at it as, you know, never do this and try to do this all the time, I'm going to take that same attitude that you have a choice between uh, nutritious chest training and maybe less nutritious chest training. So I'm kind of going to go over that on um, a general level here and give you some examples along the way and if you of, of what you could be doing. And, and uh, I'll let you make the choice in your own play. And if you enjoy that... Um, you know, let me know in the comments, and don't forget to uh, hit that like button, too, as we go along. So, okay, let's uh, get started here. And the primary uh, food staple in your, your chess is going to be the play, you know, your uh, playing chess and training. So when uh, we talk about it being more nutritious, I'm specifically talking about in terms of improving your ability to get better in terms of, say, tournament play or, I guess, serious play, okay? Uh, at least that's how we're going to measure it here. So with that in mind, uh, the more nutritious aspects would be playing games with longer time controls. Uh, it would also mean playing a tough competition. And uh, we'll go... It, it's interesting because I, sometimes I think this is self-evident but I do run into people who tell me, you know what, I, I got my rating up because I play people who are slightly weaker than I am, and I know I can beat them more often. And I think that's a um, not really a right way to look at it. Yes, maybe temporarily your rating might get uh, bolstered because uh, you know, you're beating up people who are much weaker than you, but you actually aren't going to get better at chess. You're not going to get stronger. So tough competition that's going to punish you is going to help you to, uh, it's going to force you to overcome your mistakes and actually learn more about chess. So uh, make sure you're playing tough competition. Tournament conditions. So what I mean here is that uh, even if you're playing online, uh, which is where most of my play is online, uh, with the tournament every month or two uh, over the board, you want to still try to strive to have conditions that, where you're not distracted. Uh, maybe, um, you know, after the kids have gone to bed, someplace where you're not going to get interrupted and in a place you're going to be comfortable so you can focus and think. Because uh, when you play and then you, you know, you want to know that mistakes that you make and good moves you made are, are due to your best effort, okay? Because it's hard to measure, you know, if you're distracted. And this happens sometimes. I, I play sometimes and my wife's talking to me or uh, have the TV in the background and I'll, I'll get distracted. And so I don't always, um, I don't always play my best because of the, that. But until you focus and uh, can measure your best, it's hard to know where, you know, how to improve or where to improve. So, so try to have conditions that are uh, with low distraction and where you can put in your best effort. Okay, uh, and of course, uh, this is very important, post-mortem analysis. You need to analyze your game afterwards in order to learn from it. Okay, that is where most of the benefit of playing will be there I mean, playing in general especially if you do play tough competition longer time controls um, tournament conditions you will improve because it is um, 
you'll get used to the pressure. You will learn things through playing, but you can accelerate that or get a lot more out of each game that you play by analyzing it. And I've, I have a few videos on that and articles, and I'll put a link in the description. So less nutritious uh, activity with regard to play would be uh, Blitz and Bullet. And again, it's not that they're totally uh, bad for you or um, that they are things to avoid at all cost, but uh, they are not maybe for, for uh, as, um, let's say, beneficial overall, I guess you could say. Uh, there are benefits. Two of them we could talk about in a different video, but uh, try to limit those um, in your overall uh, scheme of things, okay? I guess what I'm saying is, uh, this is where that choice is. You know, you have a choice between playing Blitz game and maybe and doing some analysis or studying a new end game or something like that. So, you know, maybe studying that new material or doing that analysis that's going to improve your ability to play in longer games and serious games might be more beneficial than playing five or six Blitz games, okay? Uh, weak competition. We mentioned that. I alluded to that earlier. But basically, uh, you learn the best when you're playing people who are slightly better than you. Um, and, and some people say, you know, basically as much as you can tolerate. If you... Uh, uh, you know, a lot of people, though, it's very difficult to lose game after game after game. But that's why, uh, you know, sometimes the most um, beneficial is someone who's maybe just slightly better than you. Someone that, you know, players that you can beat occasionally, but maybe will be able to beat you at least half of the time, okay? So um, you want to avoid weak competition. Every, every, actually, it's very good to play weak competition occasionally because you need to learn how to beat weaker competition. Uh, but do not make that a main staple of your diet. Uh, playing too casually. And this, so this is more referring to, um, you know, when you're playing online, like I said, if you have the TV in the background or you have another, uh, you know, playing, you, you're watching YouTube while you're playing, uh, maybe not the most ideal conditions for learning and getting better. Okay, and then, of course, no post-mortem analysis. This is, uh, I, I think... Um, you really want to avoid that. Even if you just spend 20 minutes or 10 minutes looking at your game uh, that you just played, I think it's important. Even even if you just want to look up the opening and see where one one you know where you went astray, I think it's important to get that analysis in. So this is the, so this is the play aspect of your um, chess improvement activity. So we'll go on to the next one. Okay, the second area that I want to cover today is analysis. So analysis is when you look at a chess position either from your own game or from a master game or just some position you saw, whether it's a tactics position. So any type of activity where you are trying to figure out what the best move is, okay? And, and typically most of that time will be spent on your own games uh, analyzing. So uh, there's what I was saying, the more nutritious ways to do it. And I believe that is uh, starting off on your own, okay? And we'll get into why, you know, why in a second here. Um, on your own, try to figure it out, try to think for yourself, and then follow it up. Then you, you can follow it up with uh, working with a coach, a mentor, or using the chess engine to check your tactics, okay? So start off on your own, and then... Once you feel that you've gotten the grasp of it, or maybe if you set a timer for yourself, then maybe consult um, you know the expert, whether it be a coach or a chess engine. Like I said, chess engine mainly in tactical type positions. Okay, uh, and then you want to annotate these positions and variations that you are analyzing with your thoughts and conclusions. So write down, you know, I think this is good or I think this is weak. I think white has an advantage. I think black has an advantage. You want to get down your thoughts. And the reason for that is that every time you do that, it helps you to strengthen your own, um, I guess, independent critical thinking when it comes to chess, okay? Yeah, what I'm trying to teach you here is you don't want to become a, a parrot where you're just saying, well, you know, Yasser Sirwan said that this position's good. Now, I, you know, I love Yasser Sirwan. I love his videos, but you want to start thinking for yourself. And sometimes you're going to be wrong when that happens, which is why you need to sometimes consult a coach or use the chess engine to make sure that you're right. But then you build upon that, okay? You see, why did I get that wrong? So you can see this analysis aspect is very important as part of your chess diet. Uh, 
the mistakes that people make or the less nutritious aspects is if you overuse the chess engines, okay? I think I might have told the story before about someone I played on online and then afterwards he said, oh, you are winning, negative 0.25, you know, and he would just, all he would do is spit out the chess engine analysis. And when I said, oh, you know what, uh, yeah, I, I let you get that square or I, I let you isolate my pawn, I was trying to talk in chess language, in human language, in order to understand the position more and all he was spitting was variations that he was getting from his chess engine that's why you know he's not going to improve his ability to do this because uh, your, your chess engine isn't going to be right next to you while you're making moves in a game okay uh however on the the flip side is when you do analyze on your own and especially the weaker you are the more the more this is the case you you do need to have a check of feedback on your analysis so when you look at your games and you try to make some conclusions, run that chess engine and say, make sure you didn't miss like a, a maiden three or something, okay? Uh, and, and that combination of working on your own followed up by feedback, I think is the best method and the most nutritious way to analyze, okay? So let's go on to the next uh, food group, chess food group. Okay, the next area is a big one for a lot of players is tactics training. And uh, it's one of those things where if you're putting in effort, it's, it's one of the best ways or fastest ways to improve, uh, especially at, um, you know, beginner and intermediate levels, uh, because uh, a tactical mistake can undo, you know, 30 good moves, okay? So being able to spot them and also to avoid making blunders is, uh, and I'm going to have another video. I'm going to have a video on Blunder soon. I know I've, uh, I've had some conversation on uh, in the comments of my last video about that, but I'm working on that. But I, uh, it's a little bit of a, a bigger project than I initially thought. Um, anyways, getting back to this. Um, so uh, here are some nutritious ways to do your tactics training. You want to make sure you've built a foundation. And uh, right now I'm, I'm about halfway through um, chess uh, 1001 uh, chess exercises for beginning players and even though I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm not a beginner per se but but uh, finding building that foundation of all those themes and motives um, is very important and I really if you haven't done I uh, haven't read a specific book that kind of covers them all then uh, building a foundation is is you know it's something I, I recommend highly I'll put a, a link to that um, chessable ebook in my notes as well as to the review I did on it um, but if you have other books uh, there are other very good tactics books out there if you if you've studied it again front to back to get the full area of it so uh, it, it's important to build that foundation okay uh, you need to be consistent okay this is an area uh, it's like showering okay if you shower once that's good for the day or maybe two days, but you probably should shower again. Otherwise, people aren't going to be around you, okay? Um, or I guess it is, it's like eating, you know, eating uh, that piece of broccoli uh, once isn't good enough. You need to eat vegetables and fruits every day, okay? Uh, you want to study your mistakes. And this is a mistake I, I've made in the past where either I was frustrated or just trying to get through them. I was in the mindset that more was better, okay? The volume isn't as important as learning the patterns and learning why you made mistakes. Sometimes the mistake is just turn off the TV or the mistake is just get a better night's sleep before you do your tactics. Um, I used to do my tactics as my kids were getting ready for school. And so they'd be like, Dad, you know, help me make my lunch or, or uh, you know, I need some, some socks and, you know, all the things I have to do to help my kids get ready for school. And... Uh, I would make a lot of mistakes there. So you know what I, I did? And it, it really increased my, uh, improved my performance. I just stopped doing tactics when my kids were getting ready for school. And so that way uh, I could focus and also I could be more present for my kids. So it was a win-win. A okay. Uh, also, you want to have game-like conditions. What do I mean by that? Um, again, turn off the TV. You want to pretend that this is a position from one of your games. And sim it's a simulation, you know, when you look at uh, uh, one of my friends is a uh, pilot and uh, when they train, they actually go up in the plane, but uh, she said, you know, there are trainers or, or simulations, but the more, you know, the best way to do it is to actually get in the situation. So when you're doing your tactics problems, it is a simulation for 
spotting tactical positions in your game. So you need to treat it like that in your mind, but also in your environment when possible, okay? Okay, less nutritious, giving up too early, okay? Don't guess, and I talked about that in another video. Again, I'll put the link in the description. I'm referring to a lot of other videos, but I wanted to put this concept uh, uh, in this video as well. Not learning from your mistakes, okay? Don't just skip it and go forward. Stop, or if it's like, a, like on Chessity, you have to finish the full session, and then go back and look at your mistakes and see why it is you made a mistake, okay? And then finally, uh, not building that foundation. So this is kind of the, the antithesis of what the nutritious uh, tactics training would be, okay? You want to build that foundation because that foundation gives you a few things. It gives you the uh, uh, vocabulary to be able to describe what's happening on the chessboard, okay? And that's not just for tactics, but for a strategy as well, positional ideas, uh, opening ideas. So uh, language, the vocabulary will help you learn okay uh, let's keep moving here to the next area okay, uh, the final area we're going to look at today is master play study so this could involve studying openings from like an opening book from a master could mean um, you know, middle games and strategy positional play could mean master games could mean end game so basically studying the games and the play of master level players um, doing so in any case is, is a very good thing but again there's more uh, beneficial versions or me beneficial things you can be doing and here are just a few things to to focus on you want to strive to understand what you're reading okay meaning that you don't want to and that's why it's very important to have uh, the appropriate level of say book or video okay uh, you want to try to understand what the author is saying but I want you to also be patient with yourself okay don't worry if you can't get it right away because maybe you're just not ready for it um but make that effort because it's that struggle and, and i got this from a book recently uh called uh, made made to stick um and it, it's struggling with the content that helps you to get better and helps you to learn it okay so it's just like when you're playing people you don't want to play people who are too easy but you don't want to play people who are that you can never beat or at least not all the time because uh, but you want to have people that you have a good you know I can beat this person but I need to work hard okay and then that's how you're gonna get better again build a foundation okay you want to take a book about strategy like uh, Jeremy Silman's uh, how to reassess your chess which is kind of a primer on positional play and you want to go from front to back all the way through I know I've talked about this before about jumping around, and that's okay once you built the foundation, but you need to build that foundation. And uh, I'm finding now that maybe my foundation wasn't always as strong, so I'm actually going back and um, you know, with my coach and we're, we're filling in the cracks, okay? Uh, so you want to make sure you're building that foundation. You want to set it up for review and repetition. I've talked about this in other videos, so I won't talk about it too much. But uh, even if it's not necessarily reading the same thing over, but... You know, let's say you study, um, uh, you know, minor piece play. Okay, you might want to study it from one book, but then in the future, in future cycles of your training, maybe find other books of it, or make sure you're noting it whenever you're re seeing it in another source, like another master game. You know, make note of it, review it, repeat it. Okay, that'll help you learn it more, and therefore help you apply it more in your games. And then come to your own conclusions. Okay, uh, sometimes when you're reading a chess book. Um, it may not make sense to you one way, but if you think about it, you're like, oh, well, maybe, you know, you figure out another way to de describe it to yourself. That is perfect. That is great. Because you want to take this material that, that is presented to you and you want to make it your own. Okay? Less nutritious. Reading it too quickly. Okay? You don't want to just, it's not like reading a novel. Okay? You want to work with it, struggle with it. Okay? No review. You know, one and done. It, it is not not good for chess, okay? It's not good for a lot of things. But you uh, want to make sure you're able to review it. And usually using tools like uh, Chessable is one of the big ones I use. Um, Anki is another, like a flashcard one for maybe for like tactics positions. And I use a program called Super Memo for a lot of different things as well as uh, other things outside of chess. Okay. And then the other one is that, again, jumping around before the foundation's built. Um, the reason why is that the foundation 
is just that. You build upon it. So if you're studying a complex middle game, hopefully you've studied the basics in terms of pawn structure, king safety, the center, these concepts, and then apply it to the more complex situations. And that's how we uh, get better. Okay? Um, and that is kind of the... the the best uh, nutritious ways to study master play. Um, well, let's conclude with a few, a few okay. tips here. So just a few final points here. Uh, I want you to always recognize that you have a choice, okay? Uh, let's say it's been a long day at work and you come home and you click on that uh, ICC icon. I'm speaking from personal experience. And then you, you know, go ahead and you binge, uh, um, you know, half an hour of Blitz, <laughs> okay? Uh, instead... Now, sometimes you just want to do that to uh, to relax, but instead maybe I could have pulled out my endgame book and maybe just spent a little time going over a position and loading it into my chess engine and playing against the chess engine to study it for half an hour. Same amount of time, different choices. So you have to recognize that you have that choice, okay? Because we only have a limited amount of time, unless you're a professional chess player where this is your, your light, your... Uh, you know, making a living, in which case you're probably not watching this video. Um, you know, we have limited time. We have responsibilities. So you want to make the best use of that time. Okay. Be systematic. Okay. Come up with a schedule. Rotate among the different activities, tactics training, uh, hopefully on a daily basis. If not, you know, many times a week. Uh, rotate between your various things that you're studying. Okay. Making sure you're having set times for that. But don't be dogmatic, meaning don't don't say, I have to do this, or this is the only way, okay? There's a lot of different ways to get better at chess, okay? And, you know, I give you a few on this channel, and you may read some differing views or variations on other channels or in books. And there's a lot of different ways to do it, okay? So even if it's something that I tell you, don't be dogmatic about it. You want to be systematic because by being systematic, you could see here I am at point A, three months later, did I improve that? Okay, let's say with your tactics, you're trying to learn tactics. Did you improve from one month to the next? From maybe, you know, maybe go longer period. Did I improve this whole year in tactics? What can I do differently? So that's where you want to be systematic. You want to record things. But let's say you go on vacation. Don't worry about it. Don't beat yourself up over it. I used to, as a problem I had to overcome, Okay. So, therefore, you want to forgive yourself when you stray from the schedule, okay? Uh, there are going to be times in your life when other priorities will take precedence. I actually learned this from my martial arts instructor, and he uh, gave me some good advice because uh, I was uh, about finishing college when I was training with him, and he said, you know, Brian, different times in your life, you are going to spend six months away where you're not going to do any training. But remember, it's always there for you. It's not an all or nothing. It's like, oh. I'm done doing martial arts, or in this case, chess, right? It's always there for you. So if you have to stray from your schedule, maybe you're having, uh, you know, maybe if you're a student, you've got finals coming up, you're going to have to take a couple weeks off. You know, maybe just fit in 15 minutes where you can just review some openings with Chessable, you know, or just do some, like, two or three tactics problems a day, just something to connect you. But don't worry about not being able to do your, you know, hour a day or 90 minutes a day training, okay? Finally, sometimes you have to treat yourself. Okay, so, uh, and you can make this systematic, meaning, you know, if I finish this book, I'm going to, you know, play some Blitz games, or uh, I'm going to watch some chess videos. Uh, but you have to, uh, just like any diet, you know, having those cheat days, okay? You're, you're following your schedule, but every few days you're going to play on that Blitz tournament, okay? Or you're just going to watch some videos. Uh, that's part of this, it's a cycle of, of stressing your system getting better, improving, and resting. It's like if you're lifting weights. When you, you know, lift weights, you need to rest in order for the muscles to get stronger. Okay? So uh, hopefully uh, you found this video helpful, and I'd uh, love to hear your comments uh, and what you thought. Hey, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video today. If you did, please press that like button. And if you are new to Better Chest Training, uh, this channel is all about helping you to be the hero, your own chess journey. Uh, I'd love to join you on that journey. And if you'd like to have me along, please subscribe and looking forward to seeing you in a future video. Have a great day and good luck with your chess.